Okay, so today's daf is daf nun in Ksubis as we learned for a full shlank for Yosef Ezreal ben Chaim Michal and Eloza ben Ruma. Yesterday we got down about 15 lines down on the page on daf nun. Amar Alf. Amar Yitzhak. Usha is Kina. We had three things yesterday that they were attacking in Usha when the, when the Sanhedrin went into Gullus in Usha. And here's another thing. Amar Yitzhak, Usha is Kina. They made a takana she adam miskalgel im bino ajte misreshan. A person should treat his children, his sons, uh, gently until the age of 12. In other words, don't push them too hard. Try to work with them to teach them Torah. Afterwards, once they're 12, you're the Machaya, then beat them. You know, you got to be hard. You got to be firm with them. Don't treat them any more lightly. After Sometimes you have to take the strap to them, as was the custom in those days. Be tough with them. A little bit harder to do today. So, notice he says from 12, 12 years old, not Bar Mitzvah, 12 years old. That means in his 13th year. Ain't he? Is that really the case? But Omer lay Rav, Rav said Rav Shmuel Bar Shilas, Rav Shmuel Bar Shilas was a Malamed, you know, because it was a Malamed, he taught him, he said like this, under six years old, don't even accept him into the school, don't teach him yet anything, less than six, let him just play around, play in a playground. Bar Shilas, once they're six years old, Kabbalah will accept them, the Safi lay Keturah, stuff him like an ox, in other words, push him hard when they're six years old. You said before that Rabbi Yitzhak said in Ushle Matakin, you shouldn't push a kid until he's 12. Till then, you just treat him gently. Here he says, from six years old, you already start pushing him and stuffing him. So, like more saying, stuff him like a tour, you stuff him like an axe, miu and yard The difference between pushing him and stuffing him versus beating him and bothering him, harassing him uh, to preach him. That you don't do ad lachashtem and sershah until he's 12 years old already, meaning into his 13th year. We're not saying he's bar mitzvah yet, just into his 13th year. Bibay Semelo Kashan Mikol Mishnah depends for what? For for Torah, for Torah, for Tanakh scriptures, then already from six years old. For Mishnah, then you wait till he's 12. Domra Abaya. Abaya said there are only Many times we have in Shas that Abaya was orphaned and he had he had a um, a wet nurse, a foster woman, a foster mother, like who took care of him. She taught him many, many uh, facts of life. Amlaim, she told him that Barsha was six years old for teaching. Torah for teaching Tanakh, Bar Eser, 10 years old for Mishnah, Bar Tleser Litanisa Me'eslays, when he's 13 already for a uh, for fasting, a 24 hour fast, like we have Yom Kippur or Tisha B'av, only he says Bar Tleser, 13 years old. Now, Rashi says on the next line, if it's, you know, if it's a girl, Bas Tracer, 12 years old. Does that mean when they're 12 or when they're 13? When they're 12 and 13, they're Chayim and Torah to fast, let's say on Yom Kippur. So Rashi says it's referring to in the 12th year, presumably he means also in the 13th year for a boy. So when he says bar place or tiny samais he means into the 13th year after a kid's 12 years old. That's, that's usually what they do. When a kid is one year before his bar or her bar bat mitzvah, that's when they are, are uh, required to fast. You already push them to fast, even though prior to that, they fast as many hours as they can. But once they're in, it's the after 12 years old for a boy and after 11 years old for a girl, we encourage them to fast the whole 24 hours, the whole 24 hour fast. So that's what uh, that's what his uh, Abaya's uh, uh, foster mother taught him. Uh, he calls him Aim, his mother, his foster mother taught him, taught him those rules. So you see the same idea that uh, for uh, for Mikra, for teaching Torah, for teaching Chumash from, ten, from six years old, 10 for mission, and then you push him when he's 12. Amr Abaya, Amr Liyam, and Othni, and Hai Barshis, the Tarka Le Akrava, the Yoma de Mishin Shis. Interesting, he says on the day that he's six years old, on his sixth birthday, if he is, um, if he was stung by a uh, scorpion, bitten by a scorpion, Lochaya, that's very dangerous. That could be fatal unless you treat him right away. Mayasu say, what is the remedy? Mararsa de Daya, the gall or the bile of a, uh, uh, a kind of a bird, either a vulture or some translate as a stork. Chibber saw a white one, a white stork or a white vulture. You take that, that it's gall. The shikra in beer, you know, as you mix it into beer, nishvaya, you rub it on him, nishvaya, and you make him drink it too. That's necessary to save this kid who was bitten by a scorpion on his sixth birthday. I'm not sure what that means by on the day that he finishes his sixth, meaning only when he turns six. As he's turning six, that's apparently a dangerous time. Um, Another similar thing, high bar shas, if he's, if he's one year old, uh, either at his first birthday or if he's within his first year, the Tarkley Sipur was bitten by a bee, by stung by a bee. The human dimension says, again, the day that he 
turn one, that means on his birthday, lo chaye, he will not live unless he is given a, an immediate remedy. My assistant, what's his remedy? Atsusa, the dikla, the fiber that grows around a palm tree uh, that, that we call that bast or, or fiber, the maya in water, nishpaya, you rub it on him, nishkaya, and give it to him to drink as well. That, those are things that, another things that Abaya was taught by his foster mother, his remedies. If a person puts his kid in the yeshiva less than, at the age of less than six years old, he's pushing him. In other words, he's going to run after him, he's going to push him, but he's not going to reach him. What do we mean by that? In other words, learning Torah can weaken the body. And if you push a kid who's less than six years old, you're going to push him, you're going to try to, you've made a big mistake because you're going to try to, um, uh, to um, heal him and make him healthy, but you won't be, you won't be able to because he's too, it's too dangerous uh, because of the weakness that the studying the Torah uh, weakens the per, weakens the body. So No, that if you start him at such a young age, he'll be way ahead of his of his uh, of his friends, and his friends will run after him, but they won't reach him in Torah because he started at such a young age. And you know, when the mind is sharp at a young age and it absorbs everything, they'll never reach him. In other words, it's a good idea to start him. But to buy wisdom, but to, both things are true. Cholish for gummer. it weakens him. On the other hand, he's going to learn very well. So you might kill him, <laughs> you might kill him because his body will be so weak. But on the other hand, he will have learned a lot and his friends will be way ahead of his friends in learning. You might say, some say, they know it depends on the situation. If he's weak, then it's going to, if he's a weak kid, don't put him in there because then you might, you're putting his life in danger. If he's a healthy kid, then you could put him into the yeshiva and his friends won't reach him. They were metakin. Rabbi Yisrochinia said this halacha that they were metakin in Usha again when the Sanhedrin was in Dulles and in Usha they were metakin a isha shemachem nechsim elug b'chayibala a woman remember that a woman uh, if she brings in the chasm that are written into the ksuba those are called nechsei tzon barzol if they're the chasm that she did not write into the ksuba or that she she uh, um, that she received subsequent to the marriage so they weren't really into the ksuba the husband. Is allowed to eat the fruits of those of those, but they belong to her. However, if she dies, who inherits her? We learn her husband. So she really owns them. But if she sold them, she shouldn't have done that without her husband's consent. But if she sold them while her husband's alive, amazing, then she died. Habal, the husband who inherits her, most kuchos, he can take them from the kuchos. Why? Because he has a prior lien. When he married her. He has, he has a lien on anything that she has or that she's going to get. And when she got it, he had the first lien on it. So if she sold it, he could take it away because now it belongs to him after her after she dies. And he's the first lokech. In other words, when you have several people have a claim, like what was done here when people sold the same apartment to 10 different people, it's the first guy who has the lien, right? The guy who bought it first, he is the first one. So the husband, he was considered the first guy. Ashkenaz Yitzchak by Yosef. So he has the final rabu. He was there in a, in a group of people in Usha. Rabbi Yosef by Yosef was standing there. Uh, and he found Rabbi Vu, who was there in this group of people in Usha. Amrle said to him, Man Mar Dusha, who is the author of these um, the rulings uh, that were said in Usha? Amrle Rabbi Yosef Khanina. It was Rabbi Yosef as we had before. Rabbi Yosef Khanina said, Usha is Kino. It was Rabbi Yosef Khanina. And he repeated to him 40 times, in other words, he said, reminded him again, because it was confusing, who was the author? He told him 40 times, it's Rebbe Yosef then it was like it was in his pocket. Then he had it solid, it was Yosef Kanina who was the author of those members. Ashrei Shomei Mishpat, happy are those who guard justice, they do charity work at all times. What does that mean? If they guard justice, they do charity. How can you do charity? How can you do stuck at all times? You do stuck in the morning, you put some money in the pushka, some guy comes in with a black hat, and you give him, and you hope that's stuck. But how can you do stuck 24 7? How can you do it all the time? The rabbis in Yavda, uh, they expounded as follows. Uh, said it. 
We learned yesterday that you don't have to, not a chiv to feed your kids once they're six years old. There's no chiv to feed your kids between the age of six and 12. And we said, it's a mitzvah to do so, but we don't force them to do so, right? We, we encourage them to do so, but you don't force them. Um, and, but if a, so if a person does feed his children after the age of six, between the age of six and 12, when they're, when they're tanim, uh, that's sucka. And there you're doing stuck all the time because the kid's in your house, he takes food, he goes to the refrigerator whenever he wants. And he's, he's always, you know, he's, you're always at his beck and call. All your assets in the house, you're giving to the kid at all time. Whatever you're doing for him, you're giving him, you know, uh, you're giving him comfort and, and uh, housing, et cetera. Everything you do for him, you're doing for him all the time. So therefore, you're certainly doing stucca all the time. That's the way to do stucca 24 7. It's a person who raises orphans in his house and marries them off. They're also, you're doing stucca 24 hours a day. That's, there's no greater stucca than that. Yeah, interesting, right? Here, another passage that says, Your wealth and riches are in your house and your charity stays forever. How could, again, how can you have charity forever? You know, you give charity. Once you gave it, it's get, it's given, right? How do you have it forever? So, uh, if you learn Torah and you teach it. So, if you learn Torah, so it stays in your house all the time. And when you teach it to others, that's stucco that you're doing. So, you have you keep the Torah in your house, right? So, it's because of God, because you're teaching other people. So, whatever you teach other people, not only this man that you teach it, but once you taught them, they know it. That's stucca. Oh, that stucca remains forever and ever. Other stucca, you know, that you guys give to people, they might spend it on cigarettes or food or other or other things, and then it's gone. But the Torah that you taught other people, that stucca stays forever. If you write uh, Sifre Kodesh, and you lend it to other people, again, the same, the swarm stay with you. Uh, they don't get destroyed. So that's Oshib Beso that stays in your house. And it's stucca because you always lend them. That's when people like to give their money rather than to stuck it straight out to a sucker. They like to give it to a gamach who lends out money. And when they lend out money, they're, it's constantly being, even when it's uh, returned, the money's being returned uh, to the gamach, then it's lent out again. So your money is always doing stucker work for you. So mashin lachem. Uh, when you see children to your children, in other words, when you have grandchildren, like Avram just had, Shalom al Yisrael, that, that's peace, that brings peace on Yisrael. What does that mean? Once you have sons to your sons, once you have grandchildren, Shalom al Yisrael, there will be peace. If your son has children, then if your son dies, you won't have to call Yibam. Even though we don't do Yibam today, but if there's a question about Chalitza, sometimes it's unpleasant to do Yibam. And Chalitza is certainly unpleasant because, uh, you know, yeah, she spits in, uh, in his face and takes up a shoe. It's an embarrassing situation, causes fights in the family sometimes. Some people want to do Yibam, some people want to do Chalitza. So once he has children, that's a good thing. Or will be peace. No more, you don't have to worry about Yibam or Chalitza. Once your, your son has children, once your children have children, Shalom al Dayani Israel, there'll be peace among the judges in Israel, the Lost Linsui. They won't have to worry about who is the Yorish. In other words, when you have a when a son, when you have children and they have children, so you know who the Yorish is going to be. If your son has sons, he's going to be he's going to inherit it. Barring a will, he's going to inherit it. But if there's no children, then if, then the question creates who's going to be next kid. Maybe when your son dies, if he has chasfi, has no children, and you're gone by that time then a whole fight breaks out as too. Now we know the order, but not everybody knows the order of, uh, of ascendancy to the, uh, to the Arusha. And uh, there could be fights about that. So it's very simple when your son has sons, that brings peace to the Dayanam. So nice idea is when your children have children, it brings peace. You don't have to worry about Chalitza and Yibim, and you don't have to worry about the Arusha. Zed Medrash, Dorish, Rabbi Lezor, of course, Rabbi Yochanan's famous words for Shlokish were that you're foolish to leave any Arusha at all because that'll It'll always cause a fight, no matter what happens, right? Better to die with nothing, use it all up. Yasser Rabbi Yosef committed Rav Nuna. Now, let's let's give a, a, a preamble again. Tomorrow's mission, we're going to talk about uh, tomorrow and the next day, Shabbos is We're going to talk about the extra parts of the Ksuba, the Tzmaik Ksuba. But again, Menat Torah, what happens? There's a law of Yerusha. A man dies, his sons get his Yerusha. No sons, he goes to the girls, right? 
no, no uh, children at all. It goes to his father. His father's dead. It goes to his brother. It's a clear order. That's Minotaur. In Minotaur, all his assets go to the Yerusha, right? If a man dies and he has left one son, let's say very simple, no before, no issue like that, left one son, his son gets all his assets. Now, he also wrote a ksuba to his wife. And if he dies and his wife is still around, fine. So, so the, the wife is entitled to take that out of the Yerusha. The sons of Meshuba to her, either pay off the Ksuba, as we'll see, or uh, if, she, if she doesn't get remarried, she can eat in their home. Fine. That's all. Midorabana, the Rabbana made the rules of Ksuba. Midoraisa, Yerusha. And Yerusha is for everything, whether it's landed property, karka, nechas, Meshubatim, or cash. The children are entitled, the son is entitled to all the Yerusha. However, we talked yesterday about the obligation that the rabbis put in the tnaiks of a one of the been in different. You remember, so to encourage the father-in-law to give her a dowry. So we add in there when they get, when the, uh, uh, if he, he, they had, a, they had a, a dowry, let's say the father-in-law is encouraged to give a million dollars so that if, so how do we encourage him to do it? He doesn't want, if his wife, if his daughter, Hamansan dies, the husband will take the money and then give it to his other children from other wives. So he doesn't want that to happen. So the father-in-law, so he put in what's called two been different. That if I have, if the the and the son, the male sons that you have from this marriage, the father-in-law, it's technically you put that into the ksuba. The father-in-law is giving the money so that the male sons, the boys that you have from this marriage, they will take this portion, the million dollars, over and above the regular Yerusha. And they, they get that first. That's called the two has been different. So that the father-in-law be encouraged to give money. The same way. In the Ksibu, we write that the daughters that they have from this marriage, they're entitled to be sustained, to be fed uh, until they get remarried, right? That's also part of the Tanai Ksibu. Again, as we saw, it, a man doesn't have to feed his daughters at all. From the age of six to 12, he's not going to feed them. But if he dies, then the, the, ksibu, the Tanai Ksibu comes in and tells him to feed them. So those rules about the Ksibu has been indifferent, that the male sons will get the million dollars, let's say, or it's not, not in cash. Only if it's from Karka. That's the rule. The rule is Karka. Rashi brings out over here that um, when a person that um, uh, the Kola Smach, the Rashi and Ahmed Bez, right where the lines get wide, the Kola Smach, the Shara Karkasi. Whenever you're so much on it, when you write something in a star, it's on Karka because the Pisha Mana spend because that, the, that, that always stays. So when, a, when we say a million, a person gives a million dollars, you don't mean a dollar dollars in cash, it means a dollars in property. The property will be Meshubad. For that, so it's been indifferent. But there's another aspect to it also. We don't want to take away from the Yerush and the Torah. Let's say, let's say that um, the man says, um, uh, Reuben marries a woman. And uh, we encourage the father-in-law, his father, to give property so that, the, and, and we write in there that his grandsons will get it over and above any Yerusha, right? Any above Yerusha, when the son-in-law eventually dies, if the wife is already dead, the, the, the million dollars of property will go to his grandsons, not to the sons from another wife. So Reuben, let's say, had two wives, Leah and Rachel. And both fathers-in-law gave him money, but they each meant the money or the property to go to their grandchildren, own their grandchildren. That only works if there's still extra money that this son-in-law is going to leave, so the Mekayim, the, the Arush and the Torah. When I, when I wrote a will, uh, proper will, so you know. Uh, I would, we always, I encourage people give everything equally to all your children. Don't make any, you know, you don't want any fights. So give everything equally, boys and girls. However, the the lawyer who's a professor and a big Talmud Chacham said, give your svarim to your boys. In other words, in Mekayim, the Yerush in the Torah that the boys should get the uh, should get the Yerush. That's the Yerush in the Torah. So do that. In other words. When the rabbis, so we mean over here too, when the rabbis put in all these rules about tonight's suva, the good has been different, and that the girls will be fed, etc. All that is assuming that there'll be some Yerusha that'll be men Torah, meaning uh, <coughs> Rachel, Reuben married Rachel and Leah. Leah's father gave $2 million in property, and Rachel's father gave a million dollars in property. Each one wanted it for his, his particular grandchildren. Fine, we'll we'll, we will execute those rules, Assuming that besides the two million and the one million, the son-in-law also left over a dollar or two to be Mekayim, the rule of the Torah, that the Yerusha of the father, because that part of the money is not part of the Yerusha. That part is like ex extra the Yerusha. Besides the irregular Yerusha, 
you have that 2 million and the 1 million that are going to go to the grandchildren respectively, but that only works if there's a dollar that the son-in-law is leaving over to be Makayim, the regular rule of the Torah of Yerusha. That's, that's, that, if there's no, if he has not, nothing else except for that, then we don't, then all bets are off. And then a chasm doesn't work. Like I said yesterday, what happens if there are no boys? What happens if he only has girls? And when the father dies, when the, when the father, son-in-law, who now is the father, dies, you have to follow the rules of the Torah, you give your wishes. So, you know, Rashi says over here also in this page that the rabbi, rabbis were not talking. Um, um, let me go to some. The Rabbanan only made their takana <coughs> some Yerusha and you'll follow the rules of the Torah there. So this is over and above that. But if by doing this, by following this rules of and different, that the children of Leah will get the two million and children of Rachel will get the one million, there'll be no irregular Rusha, then all bets are off and this doesn't apply. Just like it doesn't apply in the case where there's only girls. They so, do have a pus, pus. Huh? What about Puss Bowl? Yeah, with Karka. Yeah. They, yeah. I mean, it keeps the loan. So it, right, right. You should leave a little bit over that. Uh, don't you? Oh, I don't know about, I don't know about, about Puss Bowl. We don't know. We're going to hear about that in the next month because all, we're all going to be signing Puss Bowls in case anybody owes you money, right? Yasser Rabbi Yosef, Kameidra of Amnuna. So I give this all as a preamble to explain tomorrow. Rabbi Yosef was sitting in front of Rabbi Nuna. Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Nuna, Rabbi Nuna was sitting in front of Rabbi Nuna. He said the following, Yorshin, Elman, Karka, just like sons only inherit property, Karka, landed property, real estate, Nadlan, Kachin, Abonis, and Zonis, Elman, Karka. So the girls also who, who get the Tanaik Suba entitled to be fed after the father dies only from Karka. Abash, Allah, Kulamas, everybody shouted at him. What are you talking about? The Shavagara, who the RC led by? What are you talking about? You said just like the sons only inherit karka, so the girls who are fed are also only fed from karka. What are you talking about? They all screamed at him. What do you mean? Only a person who leaves property, a karka, only a person who leaves karka, his sons inherit him. The low if a man didn't leave any 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 uh, uh, any uh, real estate, let's call it any real estate, low yarsi then his sons don't inherit him. What are you talking about? Sons inherit everything. If a man dies and he left the son, the son inherits everything, whether it's whether it's real estate. Or movable property. Amalei Rav Yosef, Yosef said, the Dilm has been different, Kamar Mar. Maybe what you're talking about is when the sons inherit, the sons only inherit from Karka. This business that I said about that the million dollars or the two million dollars that the father in law gives will go to those grandsons only, only on Karka, only real estate. Uh, maybe that's what you meant. Dilm Xu has been different, Kamar Mar, meaning just like the Xuus Bin is only on Karka, the same way the girls are only get, get their sustenance and their maintenance from Karka. Maybe that's what you meant. Um, of course, that's what I meant. Uh, of course, what I meant. Rabbi Nuna said, right, Mar, the Gavre, Rabba, who, you who are a good man. In other words, Rabbi Yosef said to Rabbi Nuna, maybe that's what you meant. He says, of course, that's what I meant. You were a smart man. You're an important man. You're a rabbi. You ought to make me, you, you, you understand what I meant. I was talking about the Kisubus I'm not talking about regular, I'm not talking about the regular Yerusha. Regular Yerusha applies to everything. That's Menatorah. Man dies, his son inherits everything he has. Cash, Diamonds, real estate, whatever the guy has. We're talking about the Ksus Mendich, that only applies to Karka. So, what did we just say? We said that the Ksus Mendich and the girls who are, who are taking uh, uh, maintenance uh, after the father dies, and the Ksus Mendich, meaning that the boys get the Arusha of their grandfather, right? The grandfather donated into there. And as I said, you know, you know, so, so. Again, just 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 to, to complete that, Leah and Rachel they each gave different amounts of money, so their children respectively are going to get that money right from landed property only. In other words, one show some children. Let's say Leah has ten children and Rachel has two children, so Rachel's children are going to get more because they they're they're splitting what their grandfather gave, right? So it depends. So the ones who are going to get less, they would like the whole Yerusha to be distributed equally, right? And the ones who are going to get more don't want it that way. That's all fine. So it only works if there's an extra dollar or two that will be that they'll be able to have regular Yerusha from, that all the children will split equally, all the sons will split equally. And of course, there's a before he gets a double share. Then the rules of Shun Dechun apply. Fine. But here we're talking about he only collected from, from Karka. Amr Chiviel said, Rav Zan Rav apparently went differently. He didn't just, Rav, Rav Paskin, and he fed the girls from the wheat of the Aliyah. And what do you mean by Aliyah? We, then we, wheat, wheat means presumably not karka, right? From wheat that was already metalplin. 
was he giving him their dowry? Umay aliyah me'al yusha da'av. Maybe what he means by aliyah means we're not talking about we're not talking about feeding them. Feeding them the, that's that's the ksubis and nakvin the girls and they're only supposed to be fed from karka, right? But if, are we speaking about the dowry? In other words, when a man dies and he hasn't married off his daughters, we assume that he would have given his daughters a dowry. When it comes to a dowry, we assess the father. We say, was he? what was his disposition? Was he generous? Was he miserly? What would he have given them? So that's what he meant to say. He meant he gave, he gave the dowry from the wheat of the best that the father would have given, from his good disposition. And that's okay. You could do that. You can give the dowry from there. Oh, Dilma Mizoni Mamashabi. Are we talking about the Mizonos? And if it's the Mizonos, we just said before, you don't feed her from uh, Metaltlin. Umay Aliyah. So what is Aliyah? Midvarm Tovim Shinemar Baliyah. When they couldn't learn at the base Medrash anymore because the Romans would have killed them, they went to the Aliyah of Hananya Ben Chizkia. Mark talks about that. And then an upper chamber. And they said, Different than what we just said, they have the kana shiur benos nados matalton. The girls who are in a weaker position, we said we don't want that to be degraded. We feed them even from matalton, even though the so it's been different for the boys that they're getting a grandfather's uh, dowry that he gave in is only from karka. But the girls apparently maybe Rav fed them even from matalton. So which one did he mean over? You're talking about a dowry, which could be from uh, matalton, or did he even say it from food? Which is not supposed to be from Metalton, it's supposed to be from Karka, but here they were Makel in Usha, in, in, the, uh, in the Aliyah. So Tashma, the other Rabbinoi, in the hands of Rabbinoi, after the Rabbiya Barava, the brother of Rabbiya Barava, have Metalton asked me. He had some Metalton belonging to Yisomim, and the Yisomim came after the father, you know, the father was dead, and they came from Oska Mishmul, and the daughter, there were girls there, they came, Amalei Zil Zom, go feed them, go maintain them. My love, the Mazoni, don't we mean like zone, like for food? Who said that they made a takana in the Aliyah, that even though we said originally that the girls are only supposed to get from Karka, but he could even get the Pasca they can get from Metalton. Uh, there was for a dowry, and uh, Shmuel went according to his reason. For a Parnasa, for a dowry, we Assess the father. The father died. Now was he was he generous? Was he miserly? What we have given and that we give there. So you can't prove it from there. There was a story in Arda. The don dined in Arda. They judged the judge in Arda did sustain maintain the girls from Metalplan. And there was a story like that also in Pompadisa. The Agri Rav Chana Bar Bizna. He collected Rav Chana Bar Bizna collected also from uh, from Metalplan for the girls. Omar of Nachman and Nachman said, Zillu Ahadru, go retract your, your psak. Don't give them from, uh, from a talpin. Be low, and if you don't retract, if you don't re- reverse your, your ruling, I'll take away your mansions. In other words, I'm going to, I'm going to rule against you. I'm like a, uh, I'm like the Supreme Court. You know, I'll take, I'll go back. You have to retract that. You can't change it. Ravami Ravasi, in other words, we go with what we said before, what Ravam Nuna said at the top of the page. That just like the boys get the suvas been different from karka, the girls are fed also only from karka. They wanted to feed the girls with metalplin that that the father had left. Rabbi Yaakov didn't do they wouldn't pass in that way, even though the girls it's rachmanas to them. Atun abdu avdun ba'ota, you're going to pass in that way. So. Rabbi Yechem Mishlakish, who were greater in procedure of Amin Ravasi, if they didn't do that, who, who are you to do that? Rabbi Lazar Savala Mez Metalplin, he was going to feed the girls Metalplin, uh, feed them. Omer Lafana, Rabbi Shimon Bal Yachim, Rabbi Yodani Bacha, I know, Rabbi Shimon Bal Yachim said to Rabbi, I know your reasoning for do this, Shein Midas Adin Ataosa. You're not doing the proper, you're not doing it according to the Midas Adin, the regular halacha, because we said the halacha is, that the boys get the psuvas ben dicher and the girls get the psuvas ben nukra, meaning that they are fed only from karka. So I know you're not doing, you're not following, you're not doing according to the letter of the law. Elamidas rachmanas, you're only doing it as uh, rachmanas. They need food. El, so I know you mean well. El Hashem yiru tamidim equal achal adars, but the tamidim will see your psak and they'll say that you do that all cases. And when it's not even rachmanas, they just want to get the food. 
uh, from Metalkin, we don't allow it. Those are the rules of the rabbis. The rabbis from Metalkin, guess again, Minatora, they don't get anything. If the father dies, the father doesn't have to feed them when he's alive, and he doesn't have to give them anything after, he, after he's dead. It's different. There's another Takana that we know, uh, if, if it's for the dowry, we know if he gave, uh, he had five daughters and he, and he uh, gave dowries to the first three and then he died, so we know the other two should get the same thing. That we know, that was his Kavana. He meant to do that. But as far as feeding them, there's no Allah that you have to feed them except according to the Ksubas Binenok, but according to the Takana of the rabbis that they made that as part of the Ksuba. But, but as part of the Ksuba, they also made it, can only collect Yitarta. Ahu the Asli came to Rabbi Yosef, a man came for Rabbi Yosef, Amaluhu, Amalu, and he came for Rabbi Yosef with a taina, and uh, Amalu, he told him, Havula mi tamre da budya. Okay, he came for, uh, came for Rabbi Yosef with the, uh, a, like a lawyer or a person who was acting on behalf of these girls who were just orphaned. And he said, Give, him, give this girl, Havula mi tamre da budya, give her from the dates that are on the map. When they would pick dates in those days, when they pick dates from a, a tree, they would put a mat under the tree for them for the uh, dates to fall on and they would dry out there or whatever. They would put these big mats. So he said, give her from the give her from the dates that are on the mat. Omale Abayabai said, Ilu even if these girls would have a loch of a bachov, of a creditor, and a creditor with a star is entitled to collect from uh, from the chasim mishubadim, but only from the chasim mishubadim. Would you give them from a talvlin? In other words, once the dates are on the mat, they've been picked. They're metalvlin now. You can't collect them at a bachov. Couldn't collect like the okay, can collect from the chasim shabbatim from karka that are written in a karka, written in, a, in in the star or all his karka because those are mishubed. Again, Rashi is a cholas smach the star yekakosi. When you have it written in a star, it's assumed that you're going to collect from karka because that's always around. You don't rely on cash. Cash disappears very easily. You rely on the karka. Even if she would be a Balchov, uh, he wouldn't give her. So certainly this uh, orphan girl who's not a Balchov, she's not owed any money. It's only because of the Ksuba that the rabbi said you have to feed her. You feed her only from Karka. So um, uh, again, would you, would you give the Balchov from uh, the dates that are already falling on the ground that are on the mat? You wouldn't. So here also, how can you give the girl how can you give this uh, orphan girl from dates that are on the ground? On Malay, he said to him, no, the chazi lebudya kamina. I meant, I don't mean that they're already on the mat. I meant that they are, um, they are ready, they are fit to be on the mat, meaning they're ripe. That's what I meant. I meant that they're, that they're ripe, but they're still on the tree. And if they're on the tree, they're considered karka, they're considered like karka, and that's what I meant. So the more so, so, at the end of the day, if they're so ripe that they're ready to be picked, that's as if they're already picked, and therefore it's metaphorical. No, the tree is I mean, they still need the tree, but they're almost ripe. And then say, pick from, give her from the dates that are uh, on top of the mat that are almost ready, but not quite ready. They're almost ready to be picked. They still need the tree a little bit, but they're almost ready. They're on top of the mat. The mats are there ready uh, for them to be picked, or the ones that fall off will fall onto the mat by itself. But the point is that these are only giving them from karka and not from metaphorical, and that's the halacha. That ksuba has been indifferent, and the ksuba has been nokfun that we're going to talk about in the next few mishnayos. That those are automatically part of the ksuba, whether you wrote it or you didn't write it. Those are matter of part of the ksuba only collect from karka, not from a talpa. Whereas a regular rushim and a torah collects from uh, from a, a son collects everything from his uh, from his father when his father dies. All right, we'll pick it up here tomorrow, Mitzvah Shem. Have a good day, everybody. Okay.